Hey guys, and welcome to a game of Total War Warhammer 3 like no other. I'm a rubber duck of war, but today we're going to be taking a look at the Order of Solund mod, which was created by Red Dragon and Ascopar. Hopefully I'm not butchering your guys' names too badly there. And it is based off the Army of Solund from the Empire, which I believe itself is based off the Teutonic Knights. So it's got a big medieval theme. There's a bucket ton of unique units, their own lore of magic, special characters. It is really fun and thematic, of course, going with that medieval theme. And I look forward to bringing this battle to you guys. If you've got any other suggestions for fantastic mods like this, because I just love to see the creativity behind such projects, then please do let me know and maybe I will cast them up on the channel. Without further ado, let's look at our build and delve into this. So on this flank, I do have the Ritter Bruder. I'm probably going to be butchering quite a few pronunciations, but there's a lot of units that I'm not familiar with. But these guys are very badass. They're your anti-infantry cavalry, which do give themselves physical resistance. And like the majority of troops in this army, they are brothers. They belong to the order, and they shall give their life to protect it. In the back here, we have some war clerics, so some nice support cavalry with very really useful buff potential. They do come in with a lovely little heal, which also gives spell resistance, leadership, and melee attack. Big fan of combining them with other cavalry units. In the main battle line, we have some dismounted Ritter Bruder, which are pretty much what you expect. I'd love to see more of this as well in the future in Total War Warhammer. Dismounted versions of cavalry could certainly be some good fun. We have the Sword Brethren of Solund, who do have their own special charge, the Solund Charge. These guys like to get down and dirty their armor-piercing crusaders, likewise our anti-infantry. Pretty cool models to boot as well. Making up the rest of our front line, we have the Maceman of Eldoro, which always reminds me of Eldorado for some reason. I don't know why, but they're your uh, armor piercers. These guys look so freaking badass. They're like warrior priests all bunched up into a squad with a gothic look on top. They come in with the weapons as well of Eldoro to uh, really buff up their splash attack, space weapon damage, and armor piercing as well. On the far side, we have some, uh, I would say, improved demigrifts. I was going to say knockoff ones, but look how majestic and beautiful these bad boys do indeed look. They also come in with the Sign of Bond, which is ridiculously powerful. So entities cannot die if they have above 50% HP in the unit, which is very, very nice for sure. Making up the back line, we do have some Order of the Sisters for a nice support unit. They do come in with some uh, glorious buffs, as you can see. Air effect wise, plus they have a couple of abilities, the power of healing and heal the masses. In the back, we have a Manganel, going to be launching some shots down range. And then we have our heroes, so... You can tell Mr. Patriarch Marius of, oh god, Fildelf, Fildorf, Fildorf as we're going through. The Patriarch Marius of Fildorf is a rather holy man, judging by the gigantic cross behind him. Maybe he's just a fan of crosses, I don't know. But he's a fantastic unit all round, unbreakable, very reminiscent of Volkmar the Grim, with protection of the saints and a blessing of righteous being his abilities. Likewise, he has his own unique passive and you know items and hexes and so forth. We have a Dark Mage of Terror coming in with a special lore of magic. I'm not going to delve too deeply into it. We brought basically every spell in the book. My favorite is being the Consuming Gate, which is a souped up purple sun, which does some pretty wild stuff that I'm not necessarily sure it's meant to do. It may be a bit of a bug. We'll delve into it the further we go. We are up against Grand Cafe today. It's just a uh, rather simple force. We've got cavalry on the flanks in the form of peasant horsemen, load of spearmen, load of crossbowmen in the front battle line with Iron Hell gunners to boot. They can do some real nasty long-range damage. Load of Jade Warriors, some Celestial Dragon Guard. We have a Fire Rain Rocket in the back, currently getting inspired, apparently, by the local Lord Magistrate. And we have a Terracotta Sentinel. We're not here for them. No, no, no. We're here for the Army of Solund and the Glorious Crusade, which will burn the galaxy to dust as we push forward, looking for juicy, juicy vengeance. And it's going to be a good, fun game. I'm really excited to bring this type of battle to you guys. My first time, I believe, showcasing a mod in Warhammer 3. At the end of the battle, we'll probably go through the uh, the roster for those who are indeed interested. But once again, if you guys do have any mods similar to this you would like to suggest, feel free to let me know, and I'll leave a link down below in the description to this mod. We're getting a little bit over-eager here. The Dark Mage has kind of Leroy Jenkins a little bit too close to the sun, and uh, he's going to pay for this. The Iron Hell Gunners light his ass on fire, and I take nearly half HP, and I have to run away. I completely forgot this guy was a spellcaster. I was like, oh, he looks kind of like a warrior priest, and I just get him eviscerated. Luckily, we're doing some decent damage elsewhere. Peasant Horsemen do do a lovely flank charge onto the Sword Brethren, stopping them in their wake, and allowing Jade Warriors to also slam into them. Luckily, we have our own cavalry swooping along to try to bring pain to the enemy. We do drop the uh, big, kind of a purple sun style spell in the middle there, 
and uh, elsewhere the dismounted Ritterbruder are uh, fighting pretty damn hard. The cavalry's getting the hell out of here though, and there's a fluster cluck of beautiful colours and madness in there. Einhell Gunners are laying it on thick though, and our Lord is going down fast. He has popped all his buffs, our cavalry is out of the danger zone. Likewise, the Avalanche just sneak the Ritterbruder round the flank. They've decimated Fire Rain Rockets, they're now hopping on top of Crossbowmen and uh, are trying down at the shield ones at the back, hopefully freeing up my lord the greater feats of heroism. The Macemen of Eldoro are fighting hard, mighty swings of their axes and hammers are cleaving peasant skulls asunder as the purple sun, this is what I was talking about, it kind of just kept appearing and disappearing after I had already cast it and I kind of love it, I don't know if it's meant to be like that but uh, it certainly adds a bit of uh, madness to the battle. The Sword Brethren go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with the Dragon Guard, which is a particularly epic fight. Hopefully we'll be able to take their heads from their shoulders. More fire is being rained down, unfortunately for us. The Celestial Dragon Guard were born in the flames of dragons. They fear no pesky manling fire. We are surrounding them, however, by double units, which certainly should help us out quite a bit. In the back lines, it is an absolute mess. This is just what we want. We want it to be a, a big, unorganized, confused push to try to throw off the enemy range troops. Looks like the Jade Warrior Crossbowmen are being shut down. The Ritter Brood are doing a fantastic job alongside the mighty Patriarch Marius himself. It looks like our cab is getting healed up nicely. We're starting to crack through the outer shell of our enemies. The Mason are doing a serious number here on the Celestial Dragon God, who are being cursed by the Black Gate, which isn't something they enjoy terribly. Lowering their leadership and armor, they've certainly been outmatched. We even have the Order Sister Warrior Nuns on the battle getting involved and are trying to hack and cleave their way through at the Celestial Dragon Guard. It is a brutal, bloody fight on the slopes here, and uh, there is many dead littering the battlefield. But we're in a good position so far. My main worry here is the Terracotta Sentinel. I don't have anything really designed to take him out currently. We're forcing back a lot of the enemy infantry. All their range is being jumped upon, and uh, just look at the glory of our Regiment of Renown units hunting down the enemy. Jade Warrior Crossbowmen do not stand a chance. These um, Zemigos look beautiful in this, like the, the real kind of darkest night color scheme. Peasant Longstone do get over here to support, however, we have the Patriarch leading the boys and uh, the War Clerics are hopping over to help heal up the lads and do some uh, decent buffs in general. Load of Cafe troops are fleeing and running to save their own skin. Ritter Brooders are pushing back though, jumping over the Peasant Longspoon rather nicely. The Mangonel did a bit of friendly fire, but hey, it's all in the name of the Great Crusade. And uh, the Dark Mage of Terror get a little bit of a... A little bit of revenge there from getting shot so badly earlier on. And alongside the Order Sisters and the Mason, we are able to beat back the Celestial Dragon Guard and force them away from the battlefield. Our Lord's relatively healthy. He's going to be bouncing around, hopping into the back line, looking to shut down the remainder of the Grand Cafe Resistance. Now, things are going pretty good at the moment. That Terracotta Sentinel kind of terrifies me, though. It's basically full health. And I don't think I have a single anti-large unit. Um on the map which is again pretty concerning we have a load of armor piercing though and uh, don't worry the uh the order in general does have anti-large troops to so showcase them at the end i just didn't bring any in this particular battle lord magistrate is attempting to go toe to toe unfortunately his false dragon emperor has led him astray and uh, we're going to bring him back to the holy light by beating him up with axes and hammers very historical here um of what a lot of crusades wanted to do and uh yeah it's kind of a history is quite cruel and the uh, Patriarch is attempting to beat back the Lord Magistrate at the moment. More cavalry is going to be pushing in. In the distance, we can see Ritter Brooders just hunting down the enemy, which are routing. And we are giving them no mercy. The War Clerics as well, screaming battle cries as they run down peasants in their droves. Once again, very historically accurate. We have the uh, Manganau just pushing up at the moment. And it is the Terracotta against the world. We are surrounded by some rather brave sword brethren of Solon. These bad boys are holding the line. They're not unbreakable. They're just chads. And they're uh, trying their hardest. Manganau does slap the uh, Terracotta in the face. But he does have enough about him to uh, at least fend off this ground unit. Unfortunately for him, we have about 50 to 60% of our army left. And we're going to come in with a big fat surround. All our cavalry will be surrounding the big boy and starting to get to work. We have hammers, we have axes, and we have the faith and justice to destroy such an evil contraption. Terracotta Sentinel will fight hard, but look at all this. Protection of Saints, Blessing of the Righteous. There's so many buffs going down here as well because so many of the units can indeed come in with them. And the Terracotta Sentinel does topple over and it is a close victory for the order of Solund, and uh, it was an awesome showcase of some of their units so i hope you guys enjoyed that one i will delve into the roster in just a second 
and uh, showcase it all off. But if you guys enjoyed this before then and would like to uh, see this kind of content more in the future, make sure to leave a big fat juicy thumbs up. Subscribe as well to the channel if you're new around here and comment down below what you thought of this and again, what other mods you would like me to showcase here on the channel. Put the links in the description to Twitch, Patreon and Discord. So yeah, really awesome mod. This was uh, called the Order of Solond mod. You can find it on the Steam Workshop, created by Red Dragon and Ascopar. And it's, uh, yeah, really cool. I enjoyed it quite a lot. The Patriarch did okay. I mean, a thousand value. I was kind of expecting him to be as tanky as Volkmar without really thinking he doesn't have the regeneration. So, um, you know, he got shot up a little bit there by me. But hey, it worked out in the end. The Ritter Brooder were awesome. I mean, nearly 2,000 gold value, 142 kills. I was able to whip around my opponent's flank though and start shutting down their range pretty early on. And that's why it became such a route. Dark Major Terror... Very awesome. The Purple Sun does seem to phase in and out, but hey, it adds to the madness, and I am all for it. 1.3k here on the uh, kind of Demigriff Knight style unit, and they did okay. They did pretty good. 922 on the dismounted unit, 134 kills. The uh, Sword Brevin, unfortunately, faced a lot of the wrath of Grand Cafe in general. Got a shot on approach quite a bit, and then uh, engaged in combat with some relatively elite troops, the Dragon Guard. They did suffer uh, somewhat, unfortunately. The War Clerics are a really cool unit. I love this idea of the support cavalry. You can uh, give heals on the battlefield. 1.1k on them. And uh, is there anything else too crazy? Not really. The Order Sisters aren't really designed for combat. I think they're really there for their buffs in general. So yeah, that was some awesome stuff. Let's quickly uh, delve in to... Uh, oh, God. Some of my replay names in there are really rude because I played a lot of uh, horrible people recently, unfortunately, in, in my player lobbies. But let's uh, hop in versus the AI. So here we go. We've got our build locked in already. And let's uh, very quickly go through the roster. We do have the Patriarch Marius himself. Really awesome lord. This comes in with all those buffs, much like a giant warrior priest. We have Gareth von Ulfengen. That's 100% how you say his name. If anyone tells you different, they are wrong. But it's very cool. And Derek Cal the Dark. These guys are both kind of armoured and shielded. And what's really awesome about them is they can ride... Oh no, not this one. Okay, he can ride kind of like a Karl Franz style mount. But the other guy is much cooler. He can ride Onyx, a dragon, which is uh, Derek captured and tamed the Black Dragon Onyx. And now he rides atop of him to war. Very cool lords in general. We have Black Monks, as you can see, are based off Warrior Priests. Crusader Champions, including Seth von Osterland. And then we have uh, the different mages, which come in with either a mixture of lords. So you can see we've got Death and Beasts here, Shadows and Beasts, or the Dark Magic of Terror itself. With, uh, yeah, the Abyss Sings, which is a nice little boost to your speed. The Night Shroud, which gives you missile resistance and block chance. We have the Black Curse, low in leadership and armor. I think we showcased that one in the battle. We have the Soul Gaze, which is a bombardment spell. I did drop that on the Terracotta Sentinel, but it didn't do uh, fantastic damage. We have the Consuming Gate, which is really wild stuff. Again, with it like popping up and down. It's kind of crazy, but it is basically a purple sun. And we have the Darkness Devours, which causes... Pretty decent magical damage, can disrupt formations, and is a big stationary area of effect. Kind of a hex to go down. For the infantry, we have the Order Spearmen, Crusaders, Pikemen of Tyra, which are, you know, charge fence against all. They're anti-large, they're also Crusaders. All these guys are obviously Crusaders at the moment. They can also form a spear wall, which is pretty badass. With the Order of Sisters, who do come with those buffs, we have the Shroster Bruder, which are a, uh, I think they're, are they just the ground force of these guys? Not quite. Okay, so there's some different infantry. We have the clergymen as well to come in with uh, some decent buffs inspiring their troops. You can see they have inspiration, increase in base weapon damage, attack, speed, armor piercing, and discipline. They're also a bit zealoty and uh, can give you no physical resistance and unbreakable, which is quite nice indeed. We have uh, some dismounted infantry as well, dismounted Halbruder. We have the Mason of Eldoro, who are very fun to use. They were one of my favorite units, for sure. We have the Sword Brethren of Solent, who we showcased, and dismounted uh, Ritter Bruder as well, which is uh, pretty awesome stuff. Missile infantry is a little bit light. We have Conscript Archers, and then we have some of the Arbalists, which is really cool. They're going to be based off, like, the Italian... Um, I think they were probably called Arbalists. And here's, like, the giant shields on their back, and they can, like, pit them in front of them and rest the crossbows on them. It's really quite cool. We then have uh, a load of cavalry. So we've got uh, your cheap cavalry. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that. Actually, you know what I am going to do? Grins watched. Grins washed. That's what it is. Again, if anyone tells you different, any historians, any uh, Pit War fans of the law, they're just, they're just wrong at the end of the day. We have the, uh, uh god, Jungerbruder as well. So just more light cavalry. And then the uh, Halbruder. The War Clerics, who, of course, we saw before, very really nice buff. We have the... 
Blingren the Bruder. Yes. Yes, that is correct. Which is a uh, flying unit, which is very badass. So these guys uh, can fly. They're anti-large. Kind of like um, anti-large Pegasus Knights, I suppose. We then have the um, Demigriffs that we saw before and the Richard Bruder Cavalry, who are elite of the elite. They are very powerful. They come with the Dark Horned Helms, which is awesome. They cause fear. And uh, they have the Oath of the Richard Bruder, which I think is quite powerful indeed. We have three different types of artillery. We have trebuchets, mangonels, and siege trebuchets all coming in with slightly different uh, kind of effects and uh, that's so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that one i highly recommend checking this one out it is once again called the order of soland the mod you can find it on the steam workshop if you just type that in and a massive shout out to the creators i think this is very badass very creative i look forward to trying to see more of their work in the future until next time guys peace peace and as always stay awesome